So thank you everyone for joining the October edition of the Community Call. There are some new updates to actually Twitter Spaces since the last time we hosted the Community Call. So in case you aren't aware and you haven't attended a Twitter Space in the last month, in the lower right-hand corner here, you can see a chat box, which is essentially a um, a tweet of the community call, but that works as a kind of a troll box where you can post your comments. And uh, as the Twitter space happens, I will be checking it regularly. So if you have any questions to the speakers that are happening today, um, make sure to post it there when they're speaking, and I will make sure to ask them that question. Uh, we have a pretty full agenda today with one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight speakers. And so there won't be time for questions at the end. So make sure to get your burning questions answered by just uh, clicking that button, going over there, typing your question, and we'll make sure to ask the speakers. So without further ado, let me just introduce our lineup here. We have Marvin uh, from Fala Network, who's going to talk about um, Fala's fat contracts. We have uh, Saruchi from Giant Protocol to introduce Giant's private beta launch. And we have Kenny joining us from Mountain Network to discuss a DPoS on Calamari Network and their trusted setup. We have Machis from um, previous Auth Trail who has rebranded to Appion um, to talk about you know their um, their rebranding. We have Vincent from Snowbridge and the Snowfork team joining us today to talk about their treasury proposal um, to be a common good parachain on. Um, Polkadot and as a common good pair chain, the Polkadot uh, Ethereum bridge or one of the Polkadot Ethereum bridges. We have Christine joining us from Kilt, who and Kilt this past month recently migrated their Kusama pair chain to Polkadot to discuss that. We have, as always, the one and only Raul, who comes with me everywhere I go and discusses the latest in treasury and governance um, that happened on the network and the major proposals. We have, and then last but certainly certainly not least, we have Markin from Super Colony, who's going to discuss Polkadot at Web Summit. This is, uh, Polkadot will be at Web Summit for the first time ever. So Markin is here to discuss that. So without further ado, I'll hand it over to our, our amazing list of speakers. Let's kick it off with you, Marvin from Fala. Uh, thank you. Uh, hi. <laughs> hi, everyone. Uh, it's the first time I participated in Polkadot Company to Code. Uh, thank you for giving me the chance on this. And uh, hi, everyone. Uh, this is Marvin Tung. I'm the uh, co-founder of Fala and CEO of Hush Forest Technology, which is the company behind Fala. So, yeah, today's uh, major update to uh, every community member here would be Fed contract progress. So, uh, for the people uh, who uh, haven't known, uh, Fala is a, a Fala Network is a parachain on uh, Polkadot religion, and we also have a parachain called Kala Network on Kusama. And uh, the major purpose for us to set up such um, a decentralized uh, protocol is we want to build a uh, decentralization uh, computation protocol uh, for option uh, modules. And uh, because many decentralized applications do hosting their option services on the centralized computation cloud, like Amazon Cloud or um, Microsoft Azure. And uh, the whole Fala Network team vision is to change this and provide a real decentralization and trustless infra for uh, Web3 uh, services. So this is why we have such protocol you know, to management all of the off-chain computation nodes. And many people are already aware that uh, Fala is also using uh, TE technology uh, for some security guaranteed. But uh, uh, the whole point is Fala is beyond just T. We also use the uh, uh, game theory based tokenomic to uh, make sure that uh, you know, uh, uh, the 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 off chain computations can be honest and uh, can cheat. So um, uh, from uh, one month of building, uh, uh, we finally come in the stage that uh, the way that uh, the major way that you can use Fala network is coming up, which is we call bad contract. So. Um, what is Fed contract? Uh, so um, uh, Fed contract is a serverless service like decentralized uh, Lambda, uh, we, uh, or 
Cloudflare Worker. Uh, it can be used for developing the decentralized application and combined with any other protocols or smart contracts together. So uh, it means that uh, we want to uh, finish the last piece for Web3 applications, which is the off-chain computation. The off-chain execution uh, still relied on uh, centralized servers. So a uh, fake contract is the, the you know the, the 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 last piece we want to uh, fit in into there. So um, there are several uh, very special features of a fake contract, like. Uh, consumer doesn't need to pay gas fees to use the service because all of the services off chain and uh, we use a staking tokenomy to make sure uh, the application developers just need to stake and get the certain computation resources from file network to run their fed contract and uh, unlike smart contract you don't need to so for consumer, you know, or retail people, you don't need to uh, pay a gas fees to interact with these uh, Web3 apps. Uh, so this is the first uh, spe a special feature for us. And second is a uh, powerful compatibility of cross. Uh, we are using Polkadot technology like cross chain message passing. But beyond that, we are also providing native HTTP required support. So it means that uh, it's available to support um, uh, any HTTP request is from inter internet. So it means that you can you, 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 you can read any data coming from internet, or you can also pushing an execution data into internet, you know, two sides. So this is a very powerful tooling for uh, application builders. And um, the composability also means that we uh, support S3 database. Although S3 is majorly development by Amazon, but it's not only using Amazon Cloud. Uh, many uh, database uh, developers or backend developers are using, also using that as a popular uh, tool. So uh, for example, uh, there is a middleware on R-Wave, uh, the permanent storage protocol is using S3. So by supporting S3 database, uh, developers can uh, combine with Fed contract with any uh, decentralized or centralized database they want on, uh, through IPFS. And uh, yeah, uh, and the last thing I want to mention is, which is, um, uh, you do need to pick up a site to use Fed contract. You can uh, use uh, Moonbeam, A Star, EVM, composable blockchain uh, like Ethereum. You know to uh, together with uh, Fed contract. So we are not trying to replace any part of smart contract. If you can write some program with smart contract, just do it because it's very uh, high uh, available and security. But if you have to use uh, central, you know, centralized servers, uh, you can use Fed contract to replace them. So our position is to uh, replace, uh, to, 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 to work together with uh, existing smart contract and uh, other uh, Web3 middlewares together. So this is our vision. And we, we believe that the great idea of the whole Web3 application is coming from Gavin Wood. And that's why we are here, not from other ecosystem to providing such innovation application to uh, the community. Yeah, so Fed Hundred is coming up. Uh, we are, uh, we are uh, it will come in the next uh, two months. And uh, uh, we are even wipe, uh, the, yeah, the last thing I want to mention is that uh, if you want to uh, use Fed contract, there are two ways you can choose. The first thing is role mode, it means that you can write up any program you want. And uh, we support ink as a major language. So uh, the ink language is also uh, created by parity team. So uh, it's a brilliant collaboration. The second thing uh, you can use Fed contract is via easy mode. And easy mode is more like SDK. So we will wipe it up for the major functions so that you don't need to learn Rust, even learn Rust to use Fed contract for the major uh, functions. So um, yeah, we want to reduce uh, the cost that how developers use our uh, services. So um, yeah, that's basically it. Uh, thank you for giving me uh, time to uh, uh, update all the information. No worries, Marvin. We have one question for you here. Um, let me pull it up. Question from Fala Network and Marvin. Does a fat contract need to be aligned with a smart contract to operate since it is off-chain with zero gas and zero latency? Does it have to be combined with a smart contract? 
wow, this is a very good question, T.S. Uh, Lipster. Uh, so, um, uh, for I think for uh, some, uh, uh, for a Web2, uh, even, even you, uh, let me put it this way, uh, the simple answer is uh, we support the both. So you can uh, purely build up some application by only fat contract. The answer is yes, you can do that. Uh, for example, if you want to set up a website or you want to write a description to execute some, you know, um, you know, a business, uh, you can use fat contract. And uh, of course, we also uh, combine can combine with other smart contract, no matter it's on A Star, Moonbeam, or uh, Ethereum. You can do that because uh, we believe in Web3 scenario, the option competition who link multi smart contract together is a very important use case, which is already existing now. For example, the MEV boards or the gaming platform, they are using a lot, a lot of chain uh, programs to think up uh, many smart contracts or multi smart contracts. Just imagine a bridge, right? So uh, yeah, uh, you can do both ways. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Marvin. And thank you for joining today. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have Giant Protocol to talk about their private beta launch. Hey, everyone. This is Suruchi Gupta. I'm the founder and CEO at Giant Protocol. and very, very excited to be here with, with all of you. It's also our first time joining this uh, community call. So we are very excited to be also meeting with all of you. I'll give a quick intro on Giant Protocol and then, you know, tell you all, all about the private beta launch, which is the big update that I'm very excited to share with the community. So at Giant Protocol, we're turning bandwidth into an asset and creating a liquid market for bandwidth that has never existed before. So think about it, similar to how AWS has created a market for compute, we are creating with Giant a similar market for bandwidth. Now the difference here is that it's a win-win-win for all parties, the consumers, the providers, and the community. And the way we do this is with the help of our three protocols that aggregate, tokenize, and financialize bandwidth. And it, and it is built on top of our own substrate-based chain that I would love to um, encourage all of you all to go check out. So now coming to our big announcement of today. So we are very excited to share with the community that our private beta went live last week. And we couldn't be excited to share this with everyone on this call. Immediately after we had made the announcement, there were you know some 300, 400 people that got signed up in less than an hour's time. So it was a very, very good start. And let me tell you more about what that private beta is. So with this private beta, our first ever release of this bandwidth marketplace goes live. So think about it as it's a bandwidth marketplace where anyone can buy, sell, or gift mobile data in 155 countries and instantly start earning 40% back in giant tokens that get automatically staked into a provider pool. And that provider pool actually performs some work. For that, additional 13% APY is given plus 5% of all sales of that provider pool or from that provider. So it's it's a real neat and real simple way for anyone to start backing and supporting any provider they want and they like globally. And as a consumer now, to get started, all we have to do is anyone with a mobile phone or a computer can just go to the giant shop and go online and become a part of this global connectivity economy in three simple steps, buy, scan, and earn. So all they have to do is just buy a data plan using credit card or USDC in any of the 155 countries where we already have coverage. And after this data plan is purchased, you will basically be, see, you will basically be shown a QR code and you just have to scan that QR code with an eSIM compatible device. And that's it. After you scan the QR code, you instantly can go online in any of the 155 countries and start earning 40% back in giant tokens 
which get auto staked into the pool that earns you additional 13% APY plus 5% of sales of that provider so it's it's a it's a real neat way for any existing internet users to get intuitively and to to get seamlessly and intuitively onboarded onto crypto just by going online and so for those of us that are wondering i do not have an eSIM compatible device how do i get started well for do, for, for for folks like that you simply can gift a mobile data plan to someone that actually has an eSIM compatible device again in any of the 155 countries where we already have coverage and because you are the one that is gifting mobile data plan to the to the recipient you would be earning 40% back in giant tokens and the receiver in this case would earn free internet and it it is literally as simple as sending a url which is a unique url to anyone in any of the 155 countries that we already have coverage in so it's a very simple way again for existing internet users to get onboarded onto crypto just by going online and um as i had mentioned earlier these tokens that you earn they get auto staked into a provider pool from where you earn additional 13% apy plus 5% of sales of that provider now if you're very if you if you're very curious to know how are we able to you know offer such lucrative um incentives you have to check out our white paper i'll share the link to that um in the twitter thread shortly but it's also available on our twitter channel uh, if you go to the if if you go to the link on the twitter channel similarly the link for our private beta is also available on our twitter um, channel itself at the top and i would really encourage all of you all to come check it out because this is the only way for the community to start earning giant tokens and becoming a part of this global connectivity economy that we are building before anyone else and it's a limited time private beta so please come check it out the link to the private beta is on our twitter channel at the top and so once you fill out that form you'll if if your device is eSIM compatible you'll automatically be invited to uh, join our private beta and then lastly we have just gotten started and are looking for ambassadors that are excited about promoting giant and making it possible for billions of already existing internet users to get intuitively onboarded onto crypto just by going online so come join our community and feel free to reach out if there are any questions or comments and feedback that you have for us thank you thank you so much great thank you suruchi for joining us today um if you haven't noticed yet above at the top of your screen you'll see that with each speaker we're pen uh pinning tweet a uh, tweet or tweets um that are relevant so if you're wondering how to get involved or how you can learn more you can just check out the tweets above um up next we have Kenny from Monta Network and I see in our chat box we already have questions for you Kenny Oh great awesome hey everyone uh I'm Kenny I'm from Monta Network one of the co-founders of the project and uh recently we've been working on launching Manta Pay which is our private transacting service for um uh, Kusama and Polkadot we'll be launching on Kusama first so Manta Pay will be going live on Calamari and uh then we'll be subsequently getting a pair chain for Manta and launching Manta Pay on Manta network um but you know there there's some steps involved in um getting Manta Pay launched and this is some uh these steps are something that you guys can get involved in right now uh so there's there's two main categories of things one is our migration over to um over to um DPoS so originally we were uh POA proof of authority uh but with this new DPoS uh consensus migration what we have is a decentralized collator network which means that anyone can be a collator which uh contributes to the 
uptime and availability of our network. And definitely, you know, everyone wants to have 100% uptime for their network. And so the more collators we can get in, involved in um, making sure that that availability is there for us, uh, the better it is for our network and the more decentralized we become. So if you are interested in being a collator, um, there are, you know, rewards, incentives, et cetera, for, for being a collator. Um, you know, like definitely check out our documentation. It's super easy. There's not really any hardware requirements. I think the, the biggest requirement is, you know, just try to stay <laughs> up and available as much as possible. Um, other than that, right, if you don't want to be necessarily a collator, but you still want to contribute to the, um, the network itself, you can stake on chain and your stake goes to delegating towards uh, different collators. And so, you know, once those collators um, earn rewards and those rewards are then distributed back to the, uh, the on-chain stakers. So uh, right now with Calamari Network, um, you can use uh, the, the, the native token for, for that staking. Um, that's all available. And so if you're interested, you can go to our Calamari Network Twitter and see the pin tweet to see how to get started. Uh, the other thing is our trusted setup. So the trusted setup is also a critical piece in getting Mantapay up and running because the trusted setup is something that is necessary to uh, launch our zero knowledge proofs. I know that's a lot of lingo, and so I'll try to break that down for you. Um, so the way that you can think about a zero knowledge proof in this in this analogy is it's a secret sauce, or or like you can think of it like a like a Coke, right? Because like the, the whole legend is like, no one knows all the ingredients that go into a Coke. And so you can't really recreate it. But you know, then Pepsi came along. So I don't know how true that is. But you can imagine that, you know, Coke is, you know, secret. Um, and so the, the trusted setup for our ZKP is the same way. Our zero knowledge proof is the secret sauce, right? The secret sauce that we created um, to make sure that all of our transactions that happen on our parachain are private. And so that brings that privacy service to the end user, to the application. In order to make sure that that secret sauce is secret, though, we have to make sure that all the ingredients that go into the secret sauce aren't just created by us, right? Because if it's just created by us, it's a single point of failure. If someone holds a gun to my head and says, hey, Kenny, give me the secret sauce, then all of a sudden, right, like, I mean, I, I do value my life here. Um, and so ideally, we want to break that secret sauce into as many pieces as possible. And so that everyone who participates in the creation of our secret sauce, they get to put one little ingredient into it. That's what the trusted setup ceremony for us is. In the trusted setup ceremony, you get to put one piece of the entire puzzle into the whole concoction of our zero knowledge proof. Um, and so by doing that, you are now able to, you now have a piece of it. And so, you know, if someone held a gun to Kenny's head, you know, hopefully never ever in his life, um, then Kenny can't give away the secret sauce because he doesn't have all the pieces, right? And so like that contributes to the security of our network. And so you can imagine the more people that participate in our trusted setup, the better. Uh, this is something that all sort of zero knowledge, or not all, but most zero knowledge proof uh, projects have to go through the trusted setup. It's a required step. And what's really exciting about ours is that we are on track to be the largest trusted setup in history, right? So if you think about Zcash, which is also zero knowledge proof based, uh, Zcash had about 200 participants. And then um, with uh, Tornado Cash, which is was the largest trusted setup in history so far, uh, they had about 1,200 participants. Um, for us, we've gotten about uh, 5,000 registrations so far. And I think that's a really awesome milestone. And I think like being able to hold up that flag and say, hey, the largest trusted setup in history has happened um, through Manta Network on the Polkadot and Kusama ecosystems, right? I think that's something that uh, we should all be pretty proud of. Um, so definitely, you know, if you wanna get involved, it's a super simple process. You can feel like a hacker too, because we designed the whole trusted setup ceremony to be on the command line console. Um, so yeah, get, you can get your hands dirty with it and, um, yeah, just follow the instructions pinned on, um, the Manta network Twitter and, uh, should take about like two to three minutes to everything. And then, you know, you're, you're contributing to the largest trusted setup in history. Uh, hopefully that all made sense and happy to take any questions. 
Yes, I see we have one over here for you. Uh, to use BYOT, bring your own token with Manta Pay, will users have to bridge their crypto into Manta and use Manta tokens for transaction fees? Obtaining parachain tokens can be a gatekeeper for people outside the Polkadot ecosystem. Um, yeah, so for for our chain, um, you'll definitely need to bridge into our network. And so that's where the ZKP is, right? And so if you're if you're trying to privately transact a parachain token, that parachain token would have to be bridged through XCM uh, or HRMP. Uh, and you can try that out on our testnet right now. It's actually a pretty smooth process. Um, and so our, our testnet, I believe, is um, linked somewhere in our Twitter as well. Uh, but you can also go to our website to... To click on the testnet, try it out, um, and, and see for yourself that the, the process itself is pretty fluid. Uh, in terms of paying for the fees, yes, it would be the, uh, the Parachain's native token. Wonderful. Thank you, Kenny. That was all we had for you. But thank you so much for joining today and um, letting everyone know about like your switch to DPoS. All right, so up next we have uh, Machas from um, previous Off Trail, and I'm going to say Appian. Appian. <laughs> I'm going to say it wrong because <laughs> I don't know how to say the new brand name. No worries. That's why I'm here to, to help you out a little bit. Uh, so th thanks for having us on, on this community call. Uh, well, the new name is pronounced uh, Appilon, uh, which is basically a combination of APIs and the French word for butterfly papillon. So you were quite on the right path with Appion, but we, we kind of went our own um, down the road to our own naming to, to make it a little bit more distinguished. Um, but why we went, basically how we came up with the name Appion or, or where we came from, I have to go a little bit back in history, how the initial predecessor Authrail was created and why we've created Authrail in the beginning. Um, when we started building Authrail back in 2018, we, we kind of wanted to give enterprises or developers an easy on-ramp with the blockchain because we saw the, the need for it because enterprises will not shift, shift into blockchain. They will not just change their daily operations or services um, just like that. So there will have to be an easy on-ramp for them. That's when we started building APIs for their initial it's a legacy enterprise systems like SAP, Oracle, Office 365, and so on, to give them this look and feel how blockchain technology could uh, amplify or, let's say, uh, improve their daily operations without disrupting um, their business processes. So we went this, uh, we built kind of this transition for them to showcase how they can uh, tap their toes into the blockchain space. But basically down the road when we were building it, we kind of figured there's more to just data integrity and authenticity. We can provide them a much bigger platform in terms of blockchain adoption. So we started working closer with uh, other parachains. So the initial idea was built in Moonbeam and Moonriver. Then we started talking to uh, the Kilt protocol. We started working to Fala. We started working with Crust Network. And this kind of just snowballed into a much, much bigger platform than it was initially anticipated. Uh, so the name change was already um, in, the, in, the, in, the, let's say in the planning from the beginning. We wanted to change the name at the beginning. Our uh, design lead back then said, look, you guys, you have 24 hours to, to build or to come up with a name, just like Steve Jobs did with Apple back then. He said, look, I have an Apple on the table. If we don't come with a name, we're going to go with Apple. We didn't go with Apple, but uh, we said, look, let's postpone the name change uh, to a point where we have uh, a wireframing in place, where we have the roadmap in place. And once we have a solid product uh, in the pipe, and this is basically where we are currently. So the MVP is being built uh, and should be ready by the end of the year. Um, and our goal with Appilon is basically to really shift the focus from backend infrastructure, what the parachains are great in building. So they're basically the backbone of Web3. But in order to really get adoption, we need to shift uh, from this backend infrastructure to more value, to more use cases, to more momentum at the front end. And this is where we come into play. So what we'll be offering is um, creating simple APIs to the backend infrastructure on Polkadot through different parachains. And then on those APIs, uh, we're going to uh, open up a community-driven channel for different SDKs. Because what we see Web2 developers who want to tap into Web3 aren't 
let's say, that secure or familiar with Substrate or Solidity or Rust or whatsoever. Um, they're familiar with their known languages like C, TypeScript, Java, and so on. And we will give them this tool so they can use their existing knowledge, but start building on Web3 infrastructure. So this is where we see Apple on uh, kind of being the catalyst for Web3 or blockchain adoption in the Polkadot ecosystem. Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, one, informing me how to, how to say your new team name. <laughs> Thanks for having us. All right. And if anyone's curious to learn more, uh, once again, you can check out the tweet pen to this space. Up next, we have Vincent from Snowbridge joining us to talk about their treasury proposal to be a common good pair chain. Hey, hi there. Hi, everyone. I'm Vincent from Snowfork, uh, and I'm the tech lead for Snowbridge. Um, so for those who don't know about Snowbridge, uh, it's a trustless general purpose bridge between Polkadot and Ethereum. Uh, we've been building since 2020, and um, we're pretty close to the finish line now. There have been quite a few changes uh, in Polkadot and Ethereum with their consensus model, which has delayed things, but, but we're pretty close to the end. Um, so just to... The, the main thing with our bridge, the main difference compared to other bridges, is that um, message verification is secured by on-chain-like clients rather than trusted off-chain parties. And we think this is uh, critical for uh, securely bringing liquidity into Polkadot from Ethereum. Uh, and because uh, bridges are pretty infectious, um, assets bridged over from other networks, uh, if they get into other parachains and DeFi markets and those assets and the bridge gets hacked, that kind of, um, it's, it's not good for the security of the whole system, of those parachains. So now in terms of our roadmap, uh, we've decided to launch as a common good bridge. Uh, and as part of the launch, we want to engage with the community and see whether they want to support this. Um, so we've got a proposal out and um, uh, yeah, it's in the Polk Assembly. I don't have a link to it right now. Maybe afterwards I'll be able to link to it. Um, and so the way it's going to work is we're going to launch as a bridge on the proposed bridge hub. This is a common good parachain, which is in development by Parity. And this is for all teams who want to build trustless decentralized bridges. They can deploy their bridges onto the bridge hub. And we're, we're hoping to be one of those teams deploying onto Bridge Hub. Um, in terms of governance, uh, the bridge itself will be governed by Polkadot governance. So it'll be that the whole community uh, and the Polkadot fellowship can govern the bridge. Um, it won't be the case that like a central collective will have control over the locked up funds. And that, that's also critical for security in the same way as like clients. Uh, yeah, that's that's about all I have for now. Yeah, that's me. Great, Vincent. I um, just to to fill people in a little bit. Um, obviously, bridges to other networks are, are are super important, right? Because otherwise, you have Ethereum floating over there, and you have Polkadot over here, and then you have Cosmos, and so um, Polkadot really embodies this uh, bridging to other networks and mm. Snow Fork and Snow Bridge is, you know, one of um, the first, well, I, it would be the first common good parachain, like you said, you know, for mm -hmm. the network to bridge to Ethereum. And then you also mentioned the bridge hub, which is something that doesn't exist yet. So in case people were wondering what that is, it is the idea that on, on, on Polkadot, there would be a bridge hub, which is also a common good parachain, where bridges could just um, integrate on top of that so they wouldn't go through auctions um, or, or crowd loans or these sorts of things and instead could just um, attach, uh, connect directly to, to Polkadot and live there. Um, maybe since uh, you did talk about your treasury proposal, but I think um, just for those, maybe if there's any new listeners here to, that aren't familiar with like um, what you could do on a, a polka dot to Kusama bridge. Could you maybe touch on that, Vincent? A uh, polka dot to Kusama bridge? Well, um, oh, so did I, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. I said polka dot uh, to Ethereum. I'm so glad you corrected was, me there. <laughs> cool. Yeah, no problem. Sure. So 
Um, Snow Bridge is a general purpose bridge. And in the fullness of time, this means that any arbitrary state on Ethereum can be bridged over to Polkadot and vice versa. Uh, that could be NFTs and various other um, things which aren't fungible tokens, basically. Uh, in our bridge, in fact, governance itself will be bridged over to Ethereum. So the Ethereum side of the bridge will be governed by the Polkadot side. Um, yeah, so that that's another application, is like cross-chain governance. Super cool. Thank you so much, Vincent, for joining us today. And as um, Vincent, uh, Vincent met, uh, mentioned, there's a post on Polka Assembly um, because this is uh, currently being discussed for them to be um, uh, um, a, a common good pair chain on Polkadot. So definitely join the discussion if that's of interest to you and, and head over to Polka Assembly. Otherwise, um, we're all looking forward to uh more common good pair chains and bridges. Um, I think I speak on behalf of all polka dot enthusiasts when I say that. Mm, yeah, cool. And just to add, just to add, I think um, we're probably looking to launch on Kusama in like um, March or April, and then polka dot itself a few months later. So that's all like the, some rough dates. Obviously, that could change um, depending on whether we meet our goals or not. Yeah. Wonderful. Exciting stuff. Cool. Alrighty. Well, thank you for joining, Vincent. And before um, we have Kilt go next, I just wanted to quickly announce, and shortly here the tweet will be also pinned to this space, that on Friday we have um, in the Kusama verse uh, an event with Web3 Foundation's Bill Boone to discuss all things Polkadot and Kusama Network. It's an AMA, so you are able to join and ask any questions you want. And they've already started collecting qu questions as well. So um, if you head over to that tweet, because maybe you have some questions, what is the Kusama verse and how do I get in there? Um, def all information is in that tweet and there's a link there uh, of how you can already register in advance and go into the Kusama verse right now. So up next, we have Christine from Kill to discuss their migration from Kusama to Polkadot and why. Hi, thanks, Emily. Uh, it's Christine Mohan from Kilt Protocol. We're an identity protocol for generating self-sovereign DIDs or decentralized identifiers and verifiable credentials. And we're working on um, in the next uh, year um, to provide practical and secure identity solutions for both enterprise and consumers. Um, a real focus on easy to use, easy to navigate uh, applications built on Kilt. So we um, became a Kusab power chain back in September 2021. Um, and we fully decentralized in November 2021 and then launched five services pretty rapidly. Uh, Kusama was a perfect place for this. Um, great environment for rapid iteration, for testing, for testing uh, our new services. Um, we were able to build up a good, decent base of tens of thousands of users for our Sporan wallet, which is the hub of where your DID and your credentials live. Uh, we launched um, Social KYC, which is a way to um, attest and prove your control over um, social media accounts, GitHub, uh, things like email addresses. So it was a really great opportunity for us to both build our brand, build some awareness, but also really start to hammer into um, the challenges of educating uh, both consumers and businesses on digital identity and you know the importance of it and how it had kind of been subverted in Web2 with the monopolies that now control our data and then what Web3 and protocols like Kilt working with Kusama and Polkadot could do to turn it around and actually really um, realize the vision of Web3. So um, after a little less than a year, we decided to make the move to um, Polkadot and it was really actually becoming quite clear we had to do so. Um, you know, expect chaos is great when you're, when you're iterating quickly, but um, as we talked more and more to um, Fortune 100 companies, um, chaos is not exactly what they're looking for. They're looking for stability. They're looking for bank level security. They're looking for scalability and all of these things um, Polkadot provides, as we all know. So we made the move. Uh, we secured a parachain, I think it was number 24 or so, um, back in August, and then took a bit of time because we had the interesting um, uh, challenge of moving our chain fully from Kusama to Polkadot. 
So we were the first um, to do so. We were a very early um, adopter of, of substrate, building there, um, and over time had decided, and as we built out our tokenomics, that it was really important for us to retain um, the long-term stability of our coin and our chain by keeping one chain rather than two separate parachains. And it's also, we're a really lean team. It's hard to market two chains that do basically the same thing. And so we really promised our community that we would retain the one coin, one network. So moving over was interesting. Uh, we were definitely um, breaking some new ground there. We had great help from the devs, um, the core devs at Parity, um, Basti, and, and a bunch of folks were um, there with us answering our questions in, in some of the channels. Um, we did have uh, a couple interesting ups and downs. Um, if you want to read some of the technical details, uh, we published on uh, Polkadot Forum. If you Google or type into search um, how to recover parachain, you can see some of the things that we went through um, over the course of the weeks uh, before we launched in October. So we are now a polka dot parachain. We're thrilled to be official members of the family. Um, we do miss the Kusama um, ecosystem a bit, but um, it's been really great uh, seeing um, other teams at the different events. We actually were in Dubai, um, I think it's now two weeks ago. And so there we saw folks like um, uh, Nova Wallet and Anton, and we saw a couple of folks who were also funded by Skytail Ventures, like Public Pressure. And so it's really exciting for us to be able to deliver on some of these promises and some of these um, projects we've been talking with. We're now ready um, to launch. We've got uh, interesting folks in the queue, including a global media company, um, medical uh, institution that's going to use our did sign to actually um, sign browser to browser any type of file. And um, it really comes back to um, the market is ready for digital identity. The market is ready for this bank level security um, that we will have on Polkadot. And more and more, um, there's a lot more awareness of digital identity from like the .govs, you're seeing South Korea, you're seeing um, even Sweden and different countries really see the importance of, um, they're, they're dipping their toes in um, uh, an ID system or identity systems. So it'll be very important to see which ones choose a decentralized route. So we're going to have a lot of folks um, to partner with and compete with. And, uh, and we're really looking forward to 2023. We believe, as uh, Ingo said a little while ago, that um, we're coming out of crypto winter into a summer of utility. And core infrastructure projects, which po um, Polkadot specializes in, are going to be critical to uh, the growth of blockchain um, in 2023. So great to be here, and thanks for having me. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining, Christine. Yes, you and both, uh, both you and... Um... Previously, Vincent touched upon like the battle testing on Kusama before deploying on Polkadot, which is a, really what Kusama is there for. But then in, in Kilt's case, where you don't want to have two tokens um, for the more business use cases and enterprise use cases, Polkadot is your stable, secure um, bet uh, against, um, against longevity, essentially. All right. Up next, we have Raul to give us a governance update on the latest motions, referenda, and proposals. Hello, everyone. I hope you're doing well. Uh, I'm here to give you a recap of the last month on governance in both Kusama and Polkadot. As always, I will start with Kusama, then I will go on Polkadot, and I will divide the proposals in governance proposals and treasury proposals. I've made a selection of the ones that I think are the most interesting ones. Uh, these are not all of them. If you want to see all of them, you can always join the direction channels or you can join Polk Assembly or SAF Square governance forums where you can check all of the proposals, discussions, motions and whatnot. So let's start with Kusama. On the governance proposals, and just for the sake of order, I just want to mention that referendum 236, upgrading state mine to version 9290 of the runtime has been approved and successfully enacted. This fixes uh, some XCM weight calculations, among other things. Referendum 239, aiming to upgrade Kusama to runtime version 9300, has also been approved by the community and has been successfully enacted this morning. Um, this fixes improving, uh, this improves some uh, weights calculations, storage fixes, and so on. 
Uh, this particular um, referendum might be the last one until we see the first changes uh, for the upcoming governance two model on a Kusama network. So please make sure to check on the first on the next runtime upgrade on Kusama, and then. Referendum 238, which failed to be approved by the community, but it's still a very interesting uh, proposal to take into account, was uh, rejected, but was proposing a minimum commission for validators to be raised from 3% to 8.5%. This would mean that validators could not be could not go lower than 8.5% a commission if this proposal was approved. The proposal did not manage to reach supermajority approval. Nonetheless, the discussion is a very, very interesting one. You can find the post um, that follows up on the discussion in the link uh, above. And uh, this includes certain alternatives to solve the issues some operators are facing when validating on Kusama Network. So make sure if you're an operator, if you're a validator, or if you're a nominator, make sure to check this discussion to be up to date into what validators are facing today on Kusama Network and what are the alternatives to fix this. On Kusama Network and related to Treasury, Motion 559, seeking to top up the infrastructure maintenance bounty to continue covering ongoing costs of running public infrastructure has passed the council vote. This proposal aims to continue with the efforts of covering maintenance costs for public infrastructure. These are explorers, indexers, RPC endpoint services, among other projects that are free to use by the community while taking into account new conditions requested by the community for the service providers. This is a bounty top up, which means that there is a curation team in charge of managing the funds and they decide uh, after evaluation and approval or rejection of the proposals, which team or which projects on public infrastructure related projects get the, the funding from the bounty. An external motion 561 aiming to fund a fearless treasury proposal has passed Council vote. This proposal includes a browser extension for Chrome and Mozilla, as well as a desktop application for Windows, among other developments. Since the motion was submitted as external, given the previous discussion on this particular proposal, uh, in general for proposals that I don't want to say controversial, but seem to be a much more, there's, there seems to be a much more heated discussion on this. The council aims to uh, submit it as, as external, so the community has the final say on this. And it is now an external queue. It was approved by the council. It's now an external queue. And during the, le the next launch period, it will be up for vote by the community for the next seven days. And then another interesting proposal I want to talk about uh, on Kusama Network is a treasury proposal from PolkaSafe. PolkaSafe aimed to develop a user-friendly multi-sig wallet user interface for the Polkadot and the Kusama ecosystems. It did not reach majority, so this uh, proposal is being uh, re reviewed and the team is regrouping for a future vote, answering all of the feedback and comments from council members that did not vote on the proposal and also from the community. So please make sure to leave your feedback on the Treasury uh, submission. If you have time, you will be able to find the link on the Polkadot forum that will be shared uh, here today and also in the direction channel. Let's move to Polkadot Network. On Polkadot Network, we had very, very interesting governance proposals in this past month. Let's start with Referendum 78. Referendum 78 aims to set up the initial configuration for the awaited Polkadot nomination pools, this, which is a very, very exciting development on Polkadot Network, and is currently up for vote with six days left as Referendum 78. So make sure you, you review the proposal and cast your vote there. This first configuration will define one dot required to join a pool, 200 dots to create a pool, and a maximum of 64 pools and 16,000 members in all pools. Of course, this first configuration is just and defined as the by the staking team is just a precaution just to be safe. But this can be changed in the future for a more permissive um, configuration if the community wants to. Referendum 79, aiming to upgrade the Polkadot runtime to version 9291, as well as statement to version 9290, has been successfully enacted. 
Referendum 80, seeking sufficiency for USCT on state mine, is currently passing with 98% in favor and only 18 dates, uh, days left uh, to vote. Just to recap, for those who don't know what sufficiency means on statement, a token is sufficient when it can pay transaction fees and exist on accounts without requiring DOT tokens for existential deposit. So what USCT um, is looking for here in statement is to become sufficient in order to provide more flexibility to statement and Polkadot network users, especially focus on DeFi chains. Referendum 81, aiming to register the awaited collectives common good parachain for a four years lease is passing also with 99% in favor and has 23 days left to vote. So make sure you review the proposal and vote it. This is referendum 81. The first collective to form will likely be the Polkadot Alliance. You can find all of the information about what the Polkadot Alliance is, but it's basically an industry-based group that um, makes sure to um, control and safeguard the good practices of open source culture and open source uh, code development in the Polkadot network. Uh, this parachain will also support other collectives to serve Polkadot network functionalities, including, for example, the fellowship, which is part of Governance 2 uh, model that will be first deployed on Kusama. Then an external motion, motion 283, aiming to enact the same call as referendum 74, which previously failed to exit execute, has passed council vote, and it's now up for vote as referendum 82. It has six days left. What this proposal aims to do is to open HRMP channels between six parachains and statement, and as it is a, an external motion. It was expected first to be voted by the council and then to pass a simple majority carries to the community for a final vote. This is now up for vote as referendum 82. You can find it on polka.js apps, on polka assembly or subsquare. Make sure to review and vote at your convenience. Uh, regarding treasury proposals for Polkadot, after a successful approval by of the motion, referendum 77 is now up for vote by the community for the next six days, almost seven days, uh, for Gossamer to provide the functionality needed to bring what they say true client diversity to the Polkadot ecosystem. The Gossamer uh, hosting client implementation is an implementation that is developed by Chainsafe. It has been developed for the past three years or so with support of the Web3 Foundation. And the team is looking now to connect with the community and get funding in order to develop the next 12 months via treasury uh, funding. This offers an alternative framework in other programming languages, in this case in Go, and it should be a high-valued goal for the Polkara community because it opens up the ecosystem to a larger pool of engineers. So the goal is to develop a Polkara host that in this case is written in Go, used to build and run nodes for different blockchain protocols. Motion 277, aiming to cover the Polkadot ecosystem participation in Web Summit, which I think Markian will, will talk later, so I'm not going to extend a lot uh, in this particular motion, but it's organized by uh, the Polkadot blog, along with the participation of other Polkadot ecosystem teams as well, has passed the council vote, so congratulations to the team. And then as part of the green Polkadot project, a, a project that aims to reduce the carbon emissions on the Polkadot ecosystem, Motion 271 and 280, aiming to measure carbon emissions and decarbonize the network, has passed, have passed both council vote. The first proposal by Bitgreen and Evercity aims to develop a report and a dynamic dashboard to measure the collective carbon footprint. And the second by Sequester, is a, a, which is a potential common good chain to allow any parachain to become climate positive in the Polkadot ecosystem, has also passed for the development of Milestone 1 of their project. So that's all from my side. I want to have, I have one one more announcement before I go. The Snowfork team will have an AMA with Bill Laboon from Web3 Foundation tomorrow at 4 p.m. CET, so Central Eastern Time. Make sure that you join. This AMA will happen in Twitter space, so make sure you follow Bill and make sure to join the conversation. As always, make sure to vote. You can find us in the direction channels on Bulk Assembly and on Softsquare. And if you have any questions, I'm here to answer it to you. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you, Raul. And in case no one took notes on all of that, all of those um, links to all of those proposals and motions and um, 
referendum will be shared following the community call in the community call tweet thread. So last but certainly not least, we have Mark and joining us today from Super Colony to talk about Polkadot at Web Summit coming up here in almost, you know, a week or so. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> uh, thanks for uh, the invitation for this call. Um, I'm Mark Yen from uh, 727 Ventures. Um, not long ago, <clears throat> there was a separation in the company. Uh, so not super cool anymore. It's 77 ventures now. And um, so on November 1st, Polkadot will be represented at the biggest web conference. I believe this is great victory for the Polkadot. We all know how advanced technologically Polkadot is. But the world doesn't know, <clears throat> and why should it? And so at Web Summit, you ask, what's the aim? And I say to bring massive awareness to most broad audience, web audience. Polkadot is about web. It's time for us to start thinking outside of Web3 bubble and start thinking use cases, like real use cases that solve real problems. That's our aim. You ask, what's our long-term vision? And I say to lead mass adoption. Polkadot isn't supposed to be a Serum adopter. <clears throat> I believe we are here to lead mass adoption. And mass adoption, in our opinion, isn't about education. It's about having user-friendly interfaces, intuitive user experience, and technology that solves real problems. Yes, Polkadot is for developers. Uh, it's hidden behind backends. That's true. But appropriate backend functionality is required to allow to have those usable user UX scenarios that will be at least as good as we used to have them in the current web. And I would like to share a few specifics for the Web Summit. Uh, web Summit is the biggest conference with uh, 70,000 participants. And Polkadot will be represented by having one of the largest booths that the conference has. Uh, the booth will engage six Polkadot companies, and the booth itself will have two floors with our own Polkadot stage at on the second floor. And on this stage, we'll have 24 Polkadot focus speeches. Um, also, we'll have a panel discussion on the side stage of the Web Summit. And on the main stage, Polkadot will be represented by Bertrand, CEO of <coughs> Web3 Foundation. Also, we are planning a few marketing charms to further awareness of Polkadot. For example, we'll have posters all over Lisbon <coughs> promoting the centralized web, Polkadot, and companies engage. And that's only one. Um, everything else I'm leaving a secret for now. And I want to give thanks to uh, Munsama, to Kiel, Gear, T3RN, and the Dali for active engagement and for co-hosting This Is Us. I also want to give thanks to the Treasury for funding this initiative. I believe this is important for the ecosystem and will change a lot. And also many thanks to the to all other companies engaging in to speaking activities and into marketing activities. Thank you guys. I am uh, uh, looking forward to seeing you at Web Summit. Wonderful, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Markin. And to the rest of our uh, speakers, we again, we had Marvin from Fala, Suchi from Giant, Kenny from Manta, we had Machas from Appian, we had Vincent from Snowbridge, we had Christine from Kilt, we had Raul as a Polkadot Council member and um, from everywhere, and we had Markin from uh, what, 727? Or is so, it? To sound ventures. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you, everyone, for also tuning in and those that stayed for the full time. If you came late, don't worry. This recording is made available for 30 days um, following the community call. So directly after this call, you can hit uh, listen to replay and see what you missed. And for all of those um, that tuned in and, and stayed, uh, we will be... Uh, have the November community call again in next month in the second or third week. So look forward to seeing you all then.